It's called hot chocolate. You drink it. So, you don't know who you are? Oh, yes. Ah. I'm me. I just don't know who me is. I see. But you know me. You recognize me. Well, I uh, know someone who looks like you. That's probably me, then. I think that's one of the main ways you can tell. But you don't recognize me. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Good Omens Season 2, Episode 1, entitled The Arrival. So the synopsis is Steve. Crowley and Aziraphale decide <laughs> to essentially put a cloaking device on the bookshop, which should, yeah, should, should be in air quotes there, shield yeah. Gabriel from heaven's and hell's eyes. Only it backfires in classic Strife Strand effect fashion. Uh, that's when trying to hide something only makes it more apparent. I didn't know that. So that's a fun fact for me, the Streisand effect. Interesting. Yeah. Barbara. Okay. <laughs> Baba. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara. This was a good episode. I, I enjoyed it. I, I was a little confused at the beginning because, mm. you know, it's not, it wasn't, I don't know if it's totally clear to a lot of people to understand that, that, that in the, in the Bible, mm -hmm. it's like, like, the devil, Satan, was an angel who fell. Yes. And so what we see at the beginning of this episode, when it says before the beginning, you know, we see Crowley as an angel. And we realize that, oh, he's one of those demons that used to be an angel that fell. That fell. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's what I got right from the top. And yeah. I love that aspect. It's like, okay, because he was so hopeful. Yeah. I, I, I love that aspect of that, of like with my, you know, your and my initial thoughts are pretty much the same thing. Because you see Aziraphale there with him going, oh, hi. Yeah, I created this. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. I, I created a whole nebula. Look at this <laughs> stuff. Oh, it's not going to be done after like uh, 6,000 years. What? They're going to drop it. Oh. I loved how Aziraphale, <laughs> Aziraphale had more information than Crowley. Crowley's like trying to be the big bad. Like, I did this and I'm I made this. I'm the cool this, dude. Look and at what I, I was, did. Yeah, I was, I was part of the team. You know, I was actually in charge. And, and Aziraphale's like, well, actually, you don't know. All this is just for that little planet that's going to be right there, you know. Yeah. And uh, and he Crowley's like, "What? It's just what do you call it? <laughs> Wallpaper?" You know. Yeah. I thought that that opening, and then we see in the background, you know, Crowley makes that statement about how is asking questions a bad thing or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Aziraphale says, "Oh, well, I don't want you to get in trouble." And you can see in the background, you start seeing like shooting stars, and I think those are other angels falling. Yeah, you know, and and so it, it's uh, it's interesting. It was interesting to see that kind of beginning of it, and then for it to go into the episode uh, right away. Well, proper. it's also the beginning of their friendship. If you think about it, it's their first mm -hmm. encounter with one another. How they get to know each other, and they understand each other to some degree, and then they find this mutual bond together. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to remember because I know in season one, and, and we apologize, listeners, we did not go back and I didn't go back and watch a recap. Yeah, we didn't watch or it. Rewatch <laughs> season one, but remember there was something about Aziraphale was the the angel who was supposed to be guarding the Garden of Eden with the flaming sword, mm -hmm. and that's how humanity got fire was because they got his sword from him, and Crowley was somehow involved in that. And I can't remember if it was if we were supposed to think that was their first meeting or if they knew each other. I don't remember enough. So I need to go back and, and either watch a YouTube recap of season one or just rewatch season one uh, yeah. to understand the, the relationship. But yeah, we get the idea that their relationship started right there at that moment. So exactly. That's how the uh, season two starts off as mm -hmm. the first meeting of these two and how they uh, bonded, as I like to call it, uh, uh, with their friendship. Uh, even though they're on two opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Which is yeah. so cool, but to, and they do have mutual respect for each other and care for one another. Which mm -hmm. to me, I, I that's why I really do enjoy this show as well as the books itself too. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, everybody, this is a Neil Gaiman 
story. And uh, you could actually purchase that. And if you go to goldennotebook.indelight.org, Neil Gaiman has some stuff. That, and we'll put this in the notes so that way you can link it and go there. He has some stuff, some books and graphic novels, including Good Omens. And you can get them there and they're signed from yeah. him at That's book great. price, too, by the way. So That's great. But uh, the, regarding this particular uh, episode in the show, with season two, like both Steve and I said, we came in just saying, hey, we didn't watch season one again. Mm-hmm. But we're moving in and looking at it with uh, innocent and new eyes. And, yeah. Yeah. And my feeling was, is like, okay, we see this and uh, we get that introduction of Xerophel when we got Crowley. We already know Crowley's a demon. But mm-hmm. on top of that, we get Xerophel and we know that he's a book owner, a uh, bookstore owner. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that the relationship we see there is particularly in the the fact that like heaven, like almost totally disregards Aziraphale. Like like at the end, um, uh, the angel Michael calls him a former angel who owns a bookshop, and you have that Uriel, that other archangel who was uh, uh, the woman who was the 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 costume designer, right? The hero's costume designer, and I think that's the one who, who voiced that character in the Invincibles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or the Incredibles. Excuse me. The Incredibles. Not the Incredibles. Invincibles. You got it right. That's a yeah. whole different thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and we see those archangels there, and they talk about and like Aziraphale is kind of like not even he's been like persona non grata. Like he's completely disregarded by heaven, and yeah. they're not even they haven't even paid attention to him until now when he does this thing. But mm-hmm. yet Crowley, on the other hand, Crowley is being kind of recruited to be an agent by this. Um, I can't remember her name. The woman. Uh, who said that she was now, you know, Hell's uh, representative in London. And she's kind of, and he's like, well, aren't they going to not like the way you're getting the job done or the way, because you're using me. And she's like, well, they don't care how the job gets done. They just care the job gets done. You're talking about Shax. Shax. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. She's the one who she's kind of recruiting him. And then later he talks to Beelzebub also, who then is trying to recruit him Mm -hmm. into helping as well. So you see that Crowley still has kind of a relationship with the the with hell um in that he's not completely i mean he's still beelzebub calls him a traitor and all those <laughs> kind of things you know um but even she says she's like well if you come back if you do this we can bring you back in full-fledged sort of thing correct yeah and and it's always <laughs> crowley on that tiptoeing of mm-hmm. do i ruin my friendship with the xerophel do I have to do this for, you know, hell? Yeah. Or, or, and then on top of that, uh, do I lose my friendship? That cool thing. And then, uh, or doing the right thing too, because he is a demon, but he wants to do the right thing because deep down he's an angel. <laughs> yeah. I was a little unsure of, of that whole, that whole aspect of it, because like you get that phone call where the angel Michael is talking to somebody mm-hmm. and she explains that Well, if anybody is helping him, then and this is before they know that uh, Gabriel is sent fell, down. Is, well, no, this is, yeah, before they know that Aziraphale did the miracle, they still don't know that Gabriel's with him, but mm-hmm. she says something about if anybody's helping him. So I wonder if she had something to do with Gabriel being sent down to Earth. I and do feel that same out. way, too. Yeah, I, I honestly, you know, listeners, we're doing this episodically, so we, I have not watched the second episode, mm-hmm. neither has Steve. No, so as soon as we're done here, I'm going to be watching it, though. We'll, we'll, we'll be moving on. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even jumped onto it. I only watched it twice. But the yeah. fact is, is that every time I get so enraptured, you know, not to use that word lightly, <laughs> too, because of the storytelling, but I get enraptured with the storytelling within the particular episode, and I just enjoy it. For the fact of these two particular characters who are two friends that are completely opposites of one another, but yet mm-hmm. combined are great friends together. And then yeah. on top of that, they do good as well as some evil, <laughs> depending yeah. on what you see it. Yeah. But- and like I said, that's what was con- kind of confusing me a little bit was was because when Crowley finds out, you know, that he could get he could get back into good graces for lack of a better term with hell by turning gabriel in 
Yeah. He still participates in the miracle or the half the miracle to hide Gabriel from hell and yes. Aziraphale to hide him from heaven. So I was a little confused there of what we're what we're actually going to see about them. If maybe I don't know. I, I don't know what they're thinking. Their idea is like a ha- um, uh, my thoughts was it was a half miracle on either or both mm-hmm. good and evil combined and making right. the best in between. But that's yeah. just my thoughts, everybody, too, because maybe I'm thinking I'm being, you know, in the middle. I'm I'm well, working yeah. right in the middle right there. Yeah. And they're <laughs> yeah. hiding. They're hiding Gabriel from both. And then what are they going to do with him? Because, you know, and, and John Ham, I just. This man I just is, love as, the character of how he's in a bl- uh, he's just completely oblivious to everything. He yeah. thought his name was John or Jim. Yeah, Jim, Jim, Jim. Yeah, he's like yeah. Jim. Sounds like Gabriel. So, some people call me that. Yeah, no, I love and that whole monologue he did about the hot chocolate was just hilarious. It had me chuckling every time. He's like, oh, it did something here, and then it does something here, <laughs> and, and then it's doing here. something completely different <laughs> down here. And I'm like, I'm just like this, John. I mean, he did, you know, he did the Confess Fletch uh, movie that movie. had some comedy yeah. comedy in it. Tag had some comedy in it. So we're really seeing that John Hamm has got some good comedy chops here i think he's uh you know it's a it's a good it's a good fit for him you know I, well i think it's always been a good fit for him i think he, he has been a comedic actor all this time he just was never allowed to uh express himself that way mm-hmm. so much so now that uh madman uh has been gone mm-hmm. and you know the the shadow of Black Mirror of the episode is mm-hmm. gone. He could do whatever the hell he wants. He could he could be his own person. He could actually create some comedy, which I think he's perfect for too. I think yeah. he's a perfect comedic actor. And yeah. on top of that, it's kind of a flip flop of Gabriel, who we know, because a lot of what we get from the character, from what I remember of last season, because he did show up last season. Oh yeah, he was he was a big part of last season, and, and he so- was a big bad in the sense of like no 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 shaking his finger kind of attitude mm-hmm. to both uh, uh, Zerfell as well as Crowley, <laughs> and now he's th- they are cowering in fear and fearing for their lives, going oh my goodness oh my goodness, and then he's a dullard. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, they can yeah. do whatever they want with him or mold him into whatever they want for him the, themselves. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that what they're going to do with that and how that plays out the rest of the season. And it's only six episodes. I didn't I didn't remember that it was only six episodes the first season even. But so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be short. Uh, and but kind of it's it's nice to to see that kind of different how they're going to build back, how he's going to get his memories back. What's what's got to happen. For yeah. him to do that. How did he lose it? You know, how again, how did he fall? Um, what you know, what happened? Was Michael involved? Was she not involved? Or um, was this the powers of B of the bureaucracy of up in heaven? Or was it because, the Almighty? You know, they or, keep they, they don't use the word God, they say Almighty. So it's yeah, I'm I'm really intrigued to see where this where this is gonna go with these guys. And and like we were talking about before we started recording, uh, it's really setting up the rest of the season for us uh, with yeah. them. I, and I love the parallel that there is between both Aziraphale and Crowley, but we also get that with uh, the barista Maggie. Mm-hmm. Well, Maggie's uh, the, the, Maggie's uh, the, Nina. The, the, Nina. Nina's the barista. Uh, Maggie is the record shop owner. Exactly. That was a great interaction when she walks in there and, and, oh, you remember my, you could tell there was like a little, like you could tell that that Maggie had a little bit of a thing for her. A meat cute. She's, yeah, because yeah. she's like, "Oh, you remembered my order," and and Nina's like, "Well, I remember all the regulars' orders," <laughs> you know. And then <laughs> and then later when she finds out that Nina has a partner, she's like, "Oh, you have a partner." You can just see how how like crestfallen she is yeah. at the fact that this Nina, who she's probably been you know watching from afar uh, many times finally works up the courage to ask for something, finds out she has a partner. But then we find out that her partner is super clingy. <laughs> like all those text messages and all the different, like, Oh, they showed up all at once as soon as they got power. And that's as soon as Crowley decides like, Oh, you've been stuck in here. Oh, uh, forget it. Bum. Yeah. Done. 
And then they bing, 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 bing. Yeah. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. And you can see that there's a lot of like, there was questions about respect in there. And, you yeah. know, so it was interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how, again, how that relationship goes. And then how the two, but I love you that you talked about the parallel between these yeah. two very different people coming together uh, as a, as a, maybe not a couple, but at least friends. So let's, let's see how this, that's going to progress. I'm interested to see how they're going to be in the story. Yeah. I think that, is a key aspect within the season where you have Carly and Aziraphale and then you have Nina and Maggie. Mm-hmm. So I think they, at one point, both teams come together, but that's just my feeling of what I'm getting out of this particular first episode. And I really do enjoy it. Both getting to know each other. We see Aziraphale and Carly in the beginning, getting to know each other. And then on top of that, we see Maggie and Nina at that point within getting stuck during that time, because, mm-hmm. you know, Crowley does this little thing in his temper tantrum, as I say it, yeah, uh, and the, the power goes out and all the doors lock. And yeah, the doctor yeah. goes nuts, as I <laughs> like to say, because it's Dr. Who. Um, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And I- I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then we get the, on top of that, uh, Azurfell and Crowley's uh, issues of dealing with Gabriel himself, trying to figure it out, and the higher ups up not only in heaven but also in hell itself, and mm-hmm. them both consorting with in their own teams, trying to figure it out how to figure out where he is, what's going on. Uh, we also have that a uh, little bit of an issue of he shows up naked with a box, he leaves the box mm-hmm. outside. Azurfell kind of goes wait there's a box and he goes out there he gets the box nothing's in it the box yeah the empty box that was going to be my next my next thought my next question is what you know was there something in that box that somebody took out are we going to find out later is there you know or what's the point of the box yeah it's you know the whole seven thing what's in the box um yeah or schrodinger's but, cat you know it's like right. is it there <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so i'm 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 interested to find out what's what's going to come out about or that, pandora's box. box who knows pandora's <laughs> box yeah what's going to come out about that yeah that was it was great and the reactions of the people as jo- you know when when uh when Aziraphale asks him, well, how did you come? Why did you come here? And Gabriel's like, well, you know, like when you don't really know something, but then, you know, if you find this person that you'll maybe know something, that's kind of, you know, yeah, he's like, like, it'll find the like, way. Like, like, where did that come from? <laughs> My brain, you know, and yeah. like, he, it's as if he was knocked on the head and mm-hmm. he just didn't remember anything. Yeah. And and that's when okay, uh, Crowley and Azurfell are like, okay, well, he doesn't know anything, so we don't have to fear him anymore. Right. <laughs> and we need to hide him. We need to hide him because we don't want we don't want hell to find him, but we don't want heaven to find him either because we don't know why he's here. Like it's it's yeah. interesting. Like I said, their their take on it, their perspective on it is a little different because they well, Crowley knows for sure from his contacts at hell that yeah, they're looking for him. Oh, yeah. And so they're like, we got to hide him. We got to hide him from both hell and heaven because we don't know who's involved in this or how this happened. And so I love how that's going to play out over uh, the rest of the season, hopefully. And we'll get to see uh, see something happen with that. So, mm. yeah, yeah. I, I look forward to seeing what we get out of this. But honestly, like I said, listeners, this is the first episode. This is our jump into the new season. We waited Four years, and I still have a poster from when I went to New York Comic Con, and I think they had a Walking Dead uh, panel that I got there, and that's where I got the pan. It's kind of like a um, a vinyl style poster, and I nice. still have it for season one. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I still own it, and yeah. I, I'm like, wow, it's been four years. It's been that long, and yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, a lot's and, happened in the last four years. Yeah, a lot's <laughs> happened. So uh, right now we're jumping into this. So this is all new to us. And obviously, really not much has happened, even though it's like a 45-minute episode total. But it goes by so fast. Yeah, I just watched it again the, the second time today and, and was uh, was surprised at how soon it ended going, oh, okay. So And I had to stop it to not go to the next one 
yeah. you know, and because and it's like unlike last year, because I think or last time, not last year, last time, <laughs> I think it was a week to week show. I don't think they dropped it all at once. No, you yeah, know? it was a week to week show. But I think when we covered it overall, it was just I like think we a, just an did, overview yeah. of the whole season and what we liked about it. I, we didn't do it episodically. This one we are doing episodically. Yeah. So starting with this, this was kind of something I, I threw the image up there on Facebook. I think I threw it up there on Instagram. But regardless, uh, if you have any theories or thoughts, or if you're following us episodically, please send us some stuff later on. You know, uh, yeah. yeah. And if you want to be on or you have any input, please let us know. That is the one big thing that we like to to give away. Because yeah. we do have a lot of friends who are listeners of other things. Throw them at us. You know, we're, we're going this. I, I think I feel like uh, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit naive about this. But I want to just have fun with this. Because this is a show that you could have fun with. And learn a little bit something with each episode. And yeah. uh, the one thing that I did not take away, which sucks about this because I love music. There was a Queen song in the movie, uh, in the episode. There was a couple of Queen songs, actually, if you, yes. if you uh, heard in. But go ahead. You're you're the music guy. I'm just. No, no, no. I'm, I didn't remember them. The good old lover boy. That was the one that was playing while Crowley was. Okay. Uh, was driving the car. That's a Freddie Mercury song. And then in the coffee shop, in the background, there's like an Ooh. instrumental instrumental. And I read this on the the I read this on the trivia uh, and then I also, when I watched it the second time, I, I you can barely hear it because it's very low in the background when Aziraphale and uh, Crowley are meeting in the coffee shop that Bohemian Rhapsody, like an instrumental or orchestral version of Bohemian Rhapsody, is ah. playing over the coffee shop uh, speakers. And uh, so that was a cool little catch. Like I said, I didn't catch it the first time, and I had to actually read about it and then caught it the second time. You can barely hear it. It's very low. Uh, in the background, but it's there. You can awesome. You can hear it. So yeah, the music is is going to be something to keep an eye on here. Yeah, it is. And I I'm one for music, but I wasn't really paying too much attention. So I'm thankful to Steve right now for bringing that up. I knew it was Queen. I yeah. knew there was Queen in there. So well, we knew uh, we had a couple of Queen songs in the first season as well that were yeah. featured pretty prominently. So uh gaiman is english so obviously you know even though he lives mm -hmm. in rhinebeck new york but and teaches up at bard college but he uh is a uh a fan of it uh i believe the first iteration of good omens that was a uh trade paperback as well as a book was written between him and somebody else this one terry, was it terry pratchett i believe so yeah so and, and then this particular season was predominantly done by Neil Gaiman himself. Yeah, yeah. So there was a weird that they, they had a weird falling out over um th not this show, but the other um American Gods. American Gods. They, they yes. had a they there was a thing that Terry Pratchett didn't like, didn't like his stuff being changed into different mediums or something like that. Yeah, I read that th somewhere. So th that always becomes an issue between writing, but the thing is right now, well Neil, Neil Gaiman's in charge of this as well mm -hmm. as Sam Man. So uh, keep that in mind and listeners too. you know, Jamie and I will be back for season two of Sandman cast for podcastica. So, uh, you know, we're doing this now on panels to pixels podcast. Maybe Jamie will be on here. Who knows? <laughs> or you can do a dual, do a dual release like podcastica does with the, uh, some of the other shows too. So we'll see. You know, you know that's what could... the, that's what the TV podcast industries one is kind of a podcastica TV podcast industries. Yeah. But it's limited to them. Ones. So I don't want to step on their toes. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 never, But never. we will give our props to uh, TV podcast industries as well as podcast as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, we will be continuing to do our coverage on good omen season two. So uh, if we do get more people in, we will. So uh, we might Absolutely. find a, a pop-up guest uh, just to have fun. Uh, yeah. But with that, uh, we'll go into podcast recommendations right now since uh, we're going towards the end. We kind of uh, wrapped up our overall thoughts, our little likes within the particular episode. It was the first episode, but podcast recommendations, Steve. Wow, it's you always come to this, and I should think of this beforehand. That's okay. Uh, you know, right now, really, the the biggest one that I'm contributing to is uh, the revisited 
podcast with Kristen and Ben. They're mm-hmm. rewatching Lost. They're almost done with that. And uh, they have given their announcement. They hit their 100th episode. And they have officially announced that they will be doing a rewatch of Ted Lasso. Awesome. When they finish, when they finish, uh, so that's, that's official. They released that. So they're, they're, I don't know how much of a break they're going to have between there's about six episodes of lost left. So you're talking, you know, about six weeks of, of lost that they've got to cover. And then I'm not sure how quickly they'll, they'll launch into Ted Lasso. Uh, that's going to be a tough one for me to live Steve because I've watched it so many times. But uh, and recently watched it, so it's. Uh, but we'll see. I I'm, I've been trying to stay away from rewatching the first season for a while now, so just so I can get it, <laughs> so it's not totally fresh in my brain. But uh, yeah, so the revisited podcast with Ben and Kristen, awesome. Uh, I would have to also add another one that Ben has done, which is Wilhelm. Mm-hmm. But him and Kristen have been doing kind of a playoff between of like giving each other homework. One would give a movie, and then the other one would give a movie, and it's kind of a playoff. They did Oppen or Barbenheimer first, which was a mutual thing with uh, the podcasting network, uh, and they did Oppenheimer and Barbie, and I thought it was done very well. N- haven't watched Oppenheimer yet. Neither have I watched Barbie. I went and saw Oppenheimer last week or this week and uh, on Monday, and uh, it's three hours. It's a commitment. Uh, it is so a commitment. Just be aware. Yeah. <laughs> be aware. If you go in there, it's a commitment. It's good. It's really, really good. It's a little, I will give a, a little bit of a, a spoilery kind of thing here. If it's hard for you to follow movies that switch back and forth in time periods, yes. it'll be a tough one for that because it switches from black and white to color and it switches time periods where it, and it doesn't give you any kind of reference. The only reference you can have is whether it's black and white or color and then basically the hair, the Oppenheimer hairstyle. Yeah, uh, where his what hair, is hair lays within time. Yeah, yeah, and that's the only way you can really tell that you're you're in a different time. So it jumps all the way from before the war, like 1938 to 39, to like 1954, 1947, mm-hmm. to the 40s when they're developing the bomb. So it's it it jumps back and forth, like I said, without any re- real reference point mm-hmm. for for the the viewer. So you've got to really kind of pay attention to that. Yeah. And I will say I had no clue the character that Robert Downey Jr. played. No clue at all. They did <laughs> a really good history books. <laughs> they did a well, they did a really good makeup job on him. And it wasn't until after the fact when I read that that was Robert Downey Jr. that I went, Oh, because you can kind of hear it in the voice. But yeah. uh you I I could not tell at all that, that was Robert Downey Jr. So he did a, a wonderful, wonderful job. Yeah. There's so much to look forward to. Uh, just to throw out a little love for Podcastica, as it is. Uh, they have a lot more shows out there. Run for Your Lives with Daphne and Paik. Uh, they're continuing on with their uh, Run for Your Lives with uh, doing Insidious 2, which just released. So uh, you can check that out. Wilhelm with, uh, obviously, with Ben and Kristen. And they're doing their trade-off of movies. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what it's actually called. But they give each other homework, and they have done other movies, too. So uh, it's kind of like a dichotomy of like different movies. It's like, oh, here, you watch this movie, and you tell me what you think, because you've never seen it before. So I think it's a pretty good trade-off. And it's usually, uh, as like Ben had stated, and I listened to one of the episodes, he goes, it's kind of like listening in on a conversation between two people who had to had watched movies that they never had watched before, and the other person knew a lot more than the other. So right. I really enjoy that. On top of that, there's the White Lotus that's coming out. That's Welcome been to out. the White Lotus is Podcastica's yeah. rewatch of uh, the White Lotus. So that's that's been pretty good with Jason and uh, different co-hosts, uh, Randy and Penny. Yeah. I want to say. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's really good. I listened to the first episode of that. Um, I haven't had a chance to send anything to, to that one. Yeah. I don't know if I will or not, but it just depends. So I, I haven't really gotten into it. I haven't even started watching White Lotus, but uh, there's so many things out there to uh, listen to. So at least to give a little love out there in the podcast network or podcast world that's out there. So, uh, but with us, with me, well, this is where we kind of move into the uh, aspects of where you can listen to us. So, Steve, obviously you could be heard here. Yeah, and really, um, like I said, I send voicemails, live Steve, uh, we call them, of my thoughts as I'm watching uh, something that whatever our friends are podcasting on and covering. I've 
did a few Black Mirror episodes for Strange Indeed. That's just sent them a voicemail. So you can hear my voice on various Podcastica podcasts and other ones that are out there if I send something to them. Uh, but mainly right here, Panels to Pixels podcast. That's where you're going to hear my voice. And hopefully when we do Space Camp soon, because yes. we're going to be doing that on Adrenaline Cinema, which I would also like to plug to. I do that as well. It's my other podcast, Adrenaline Cinema podcast. Uh, basically, uh, the podcast just does anything that's uh, action, adventure, thrilling, fantasy, sci-fi, anything that gets your adrenaline going, uh, thriller, suspense, all that cool stuff. Uh, we will be covering Space Camp. I'm going to try to gather at least a good two or three other people just to do a roundtable to get that out of the way because I've been talking about it for a while, yeah. but I want to get it done. We'll be doing that sometime soon. And uh, most recently... Well, we did Big Trouble in Little China, and then I just recently posted The Lost Boys with Rima and myself from nice. I Strange Indeed on yeah. Podcastica. So I need to listen to that one. We had a great time having – we just had a great time having fun talking about The Lost Boys. And uh, I, I said something a little bit strange, too, because you guys will be listening to it going, wait, Mark – uh, the folklore is already there. As soon as a vampire lets you in his house, uh, you invite them in their ha- your house. You render yourself uh, helpless, helpless at that point, yeah. and they are not going to succumb to it. So that's the one thing that both Rima and I forgot completely. So keep that in mind when you listen to it, and please don't judge us. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny, but we had a good time doing it, and obviously a lot more down the pike. Jamie and I are looking, you know, you know, I owe it to her too, because we made her watch Big Trouble in Little China and she was not happy with it. But <laughs> we will be doing like Friday the 13th, a little bit more uh, horror based stuff, a little bit here and there. I already spoke to Damien. Hopefully we could get to do Explorers on uh, Watched It in the 80s and do something like that there Ooh. on his podcast. He hasn't put anything out in a little bit of while so i'm hoping that we could do something jointly or if not just on his on top of that you could hear me on fantasy picks movie edition and we covered the last jedi so that was interesting uh how could we fix that because honestly i was not a huge fan of it uh neither was ben uh ben uh rob Rob (laughs) or frank or patrick so uh we try to get an idea of how we could fix the last Jedi in a sense of making it appealing to everybody. So if you could listen to that, that's fantasy picks movie edition. You could find that on the pirate core entertainment network as well. So uh, yeah, you could hear me th- at those places. Uh, other podcast recommendations, Steve, you and I actually mentioned Talkville, and they came back. Yeah, they're back. Um, they're still around and they're still continuing their talk. And uh, I do like to promote them as well. So uh, you got Michael Rosenbaum and Tom Willing, Tom Willing themselves. They're continuing their talk about Smallville. So yeah. as podcasters, they could still do it just like, uh, you know, Kevin Smith and Mark Menarden. So <laughs> that's a pretty cool thing. So as being podcasters, they could even talk about the stuff that they did before, which I think is pretty cool. Yep. So. But we mentioned feedback earlier, so we're going to talk about feedback. So with that, uh, you, you could go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. I usually leave an image of, you know, the episode. I did that for this particular episode. I, we didn't get any feedback, but if you would like to do so, I will put out for episode two for season two of Good Omens. And then that way you could leave your, uh, your, your comments in a, you know, below the image that way we could actually read them we are also on x it's twitter folks we're on twitter twitter i don't know i don't know what's going on with x we might be leaving it who Um, knows but who knows (laughs) Uh, but we are on twitter at panels two pixels that's at panels the number two and then pixels yep and could email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels the two is spelled out t-o pixels and the number one at gmail.com there. And you could just type out a regular texted email and we'll read it. And uh, if you don't feel like actually writing anything out, you have these nifty new devices that's out there called smartphones. You could actually record yourself 
and just attach it to your email, the voicemail itself. You could just be like, uh, I just recorded this. It's a WAV file, whatever. All right, I'm going to send it to Mark and, and Steve. And we'll play it. And you could be part of the podcast and we'll play it. And we'll comment about it and we'll have fun. And then you could be part of the podcast. We are also on YouTube, which is we are on YouTube as Panels to Pixels podcast. So give us a thumbs up there, subscribe. And if you like listening to your podcasts uh, on YouTube, that's where uh, we'll be, Panels to Pixels podcast. Exactly. And we could be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. Obviously, there are ratings and reviews available for those. Spotify, Apple Podcasts have them. I highly recommend uh, if you could give us a uh, review on those, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, give something written out. That would be great because I just did that earlier today. I, I did a lot of the podcast stuff that I saw that was not there before. So I redid a lot of mine and gave them the reviews that I felt. And uh, Jason was really appreciative. And just to give a little bit of love to Jason and Podcastica, if that's how the these podcasts came about when I do Adrenaline Cinema or even Panels to Pixels. I've been doing this for so long. I get my friends. That's how Steve and I know each other mm-hmm. is through Jason's Patreon. So all you have to do is go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Cabassi. And if you want to join in that Zed Head group, which we call it because it was based upon The Walking Dead, you could join that. And it doesn't really take that much. It's only a little bit. So check it out on patreon.com forward slash Jason Cabassi. And you could just join a group of people that love the same stuff. And then you get to interact with us like we always do uh, in general. But uh, yeah, it's a great thing. But and uh, finally, we are also on Instagram at Panels Two Pixels Podcast. That's Panels oh, yeah. Two Pixels Podcast, all spelled out there on Instagram. You can leave us a message there as well. Yeah, I've been promoting that too. I don't mm-hmm. know if you noticed that, Steve. I've been yep, just I've like, seen them. I've seen the posts. Yep. Yeah, I've been putting a lot more posts now. It's awesome. So, and I do hyperlink uh, the episodes and everything else, and any YouTube's too. So, uh, if you guys really want to click on those, you can. So, uh, yeah, well, that was our show. That was fun. And uh, on top of that, we will be here next week. So uh, keep that in mind. So I am Mark. And I'm Steve. And same podcast, different panel, different pixel. And this was Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.